environment, the first topic that is of interest is sustainability. You will need to remember the definition of sustainability. Sustainability is defined as the ability of the present generation to meet the needs or utilize the resources without compromising on the ability of the future generation to meet the same needs or utilization of the resources. That is the definition of sustainability. Now there are three types of sustainability. They are environmental sustainability, economic sustainability and social sustainability and you should mention these as the three pillars of sustainability and whenever these three pillars work in conjunction with each other then they become what is called as sustainable development. So an answer on sustainable development will include a definition of sustainability and the three pillars of sustainability. The second most important topic is urban problems related to energy. Here you will need to remember how to define the problems of providing energy which is electricity or energy in any other form to the urban population. You know that the urban population is growing at an uncontrolled rate. So whenever we need to provide energy for an urban population in terms of domestic needs, industrial needs or agricultural needs, then that is the problem which is involved in urban demands for energy or problems related to energy for the urban population. And here you will also need to remember the definition of urbanization which is the practice of people moving from rural areas to urban areas for a betterment of their livelihood. One of the most important topics in this chapter which has previously been addressed also in the chapter on natural resources is the part on water resources conservation. Water resources conservation in this chapter includes two major components or methods of water resources conservation namely rainwater harvesting and watershed management. Now under rainwater harvesting you know that the essential principle of rainwater harvesting is to collect the rainwater through channels or through specific construction materials or structures in buildings and in houses and direct them either to the groundwater or to a central storage tank from where it is filtered and given as drinking water or water for other purposes. And the major purposes of the rainwater harvesting is to either store the rainwater and to recharge the groundwater. These are the two major principles of rainwater harvesting or the objectives of the same. The next most important part of water resource conservation is watershed management. In watershed management what you do is you collect the rainwater which falls on mountains or hills by developing specialized structures or creating furrows or trenches which divert the flow of rainwater reducing the runoff and that water is pooled downwards, downhill into a central constructed pool where the water is collected and from there the water can be reused for several purposes and this can be used to rejuvenate lakes or to create artificial reservoirs in a natural manner and this is a very very important process in establishing a watershed in an area previously faced with heavy drought. This is a very very important part of water resources conservation. So there are two methods of water resource conservation, rainwater harvesting and watershed management. So please remember how do you manage the watershed is very very important. You will need to mention the traditional watersheds such as Uranis also. There are some miscellaneous topics given in social issues and the environment and one of the most important one of them is on resettlement issues of people and this generally happens when uh, human beings or uh, people and their animals and their property have to be moved to a new location when there is an environmental project such as a dam construction taking place. So what are the social issues involved in them that you will have to mention under resettlement and rehabilitation. Resettlement is the movement of people from one area to the other in face of an environmental project or an environmental event and rehabilitation is the provision of and options for livelihood of those resettled people. So there is a clear difference between resettlement and rehabilitation. The next most important topic is on environmental ethics. Environmental ethics you must mention just not by saying that it is the love for the environment but you should clearly mention it in a scientific manner saying that environmental ethics is of two types namely anthropocentric and ecocentric. Anthropocentric viewpoint of environmental ethics is loving the environment with the viewpoint that human beings are at the center of the environment and the environment is essential to be protected and conserved for the benefit of human beings. Whereas the ecocentric viewpoint gives you the idea that the environment is essentially important and the balance of the environment is important and human beings are a part of this.
there is a very new concept introduced in your chapter called green chemistry and green chemistry is consisting of 12 basic principles which ensure that the practices used in chemistry or in chemical products are environmentally safe and environmentally sustainable. The 12 principles of green chemistry include number one to prevent the waste, number two to maximize atom economy, number three to design less hazardous chemical synthesis, number four to design safer chemicals and products, Number 5, to use safer solvents and reaction conditions. Number 6, to increase the energy efficiency. Number 7, to use renewable feedstocks. And number 8, to avoid chemical derivatives. Number 9, use of catalysts and not stoichiometric reagents. And number 10, to design chemicals and products to degrade after use. Number 11, to analyze in real time to prevent pollution. And finally, minimize the potential for accidents. So these are the 12 principles of green chemistry which you will need to remember and please remember that all these 12 methods are to ensure that chemistry or chemical products or processes or the chemical industry functions in an environmentally sustainable manner. One of the most important parts of this uh, social issues and the environment chapter is to memorize or to remember the different kinds of environmental laws and legislations that are in effect to protect the environment and to ensure that everything goes on in a sustainable manner. Now there is a very easy way to remember this. There are three basic kinds of laws or legislations present and they can be classified as Prevention and Control of Pollution Acts, Number 2 Protection Acts and Number 3 Conservation Acts. So under Prevention and Control of Pollution there are two major parts, Air and Water. So there is the Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act and there is the Water Control and Prevention of Pollution Act. Then Number 2 there is the Conservation of forest and number three the protection of wildlife act so there are three basic materials or methods by which you can remember the environmental laws and legislations one of the new topics introduced in the social issues and environment is the concept of eco labeling where the government has introduced a system of labeling physically labeling products which have been produced in an environmentally sustainable manner and the symbol in the indian government for Recognizing a product that has been produced in such a manner is the earthen pot and this process is called eco-labeling. The last part of this unit, social issues and the environment includes a miscellaneous topic called as disaster management or disaster mitigation. Now disaster management involves both man-made disaster and natural disasters. Particularly of importance is the role of natural disasters such as earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanoes etc where you will need to write the answer in a coordinated manner. That is, whenever you are mentioning about any disaster, make sure that you are mentioning whether it is a natural disaster or a man-made disaster. And then, write the steps that you will take before the disaster happens. What are the precautionary measures or the monitoring measures that have been put in place for monitoring whether the disaster is going to take place or is about to take place. And what happens during the disaster, just before the disaster, the people are evacuated, and how the people are resettled, all these things you have to mention. And during the disaster, what are the steps that have to be taken? And after the disaster, how do you rehabilitate the population and bring them back on track? And here, one of the two major topics is on loss of life and loss of property. Finally, you need to mention about the role of an individual in creating public awareness on all of these social issues and you must be able to clearly mention about current environmental problems such as global warming and acid rain on which separate lecture videos are available. Thank you.